All right, so welcome in. I want to be able to break down for you uh, on the assumption that you're kind of within physics, most likely in grade 11 or some foundational physics where you haven't taken physics before and you haven't necessarily worked with vectors as much. Now, the assumption is that you are comfortable with breaking down a vector into its X and Y components uh, in terms of the um, actual vector decomposition. So I'll put up a link up above there because I have described that process for you. And in this example, I want to take that process and really just take these. Now, in this case, these are basically three displacements that you have and be able to add the three displacements to get a total displacement based on the decomposition. So only working on the X, only working on the Y, and then at the end, bringing everything together. And then what does it mean? So let's do that. So let's break the first one down for us. So this is this particular vector. So it's some particular displacement that we have. It's 25 kilometers and notice it's east 15 degrees north. So you obviously should know what that particular item means. So if I break this down, what I have is the following. So if this is, you know, so I like to draw kind of a flat surface in here. And now I want to be able to draw the vector on its own. Now it's at 15 degrees. So this is, let's start it off in here. Let's say it's something like that. Let's assume that this would be the 15 degrees. So this would have been east, okay? And then this is going north. And it's supposed to be 15 degrees of that. Now we're going to draw a, draw a triangle. And the reason for that is because I want to get its X component and I want to get its Y component with related to the actual vector itself. So we know this is 25 kilometers, right, as a vector. And now we wanna be able to grab the Y component and we wanna be able to grab the X component. So the first thing is that you should notice both of them will be positive. The X is to the right, which will make it positive, And the Y is up, which will make it positive. That's just by simply convention. All right, so now how do we do that? Well, the X component is the actual value. So it's the adjacent to the angle that we have and that particular X component that you will have. So I'm gonna designate it as the X, okay? So this will be the component in that direction. And that will be nothing else but simply 25 kilometers, which is your hypotenuse multiplied by the cos of the angle itself. All right, so that's the first piece. We can now calculate exactly what this is. We can bring out our calculators and I'll do that in a moment. On the Y component, to be able to break it down, I need the actual opposite of the angle right there. So that would have been your hypotenuse that you get, which is 25 kilometers, multiplied by the sine of that particular angle, which is gonna be 15 degrees. And again, this is the actual Y component within there. So maybe I'll write it in the Y and that is your first piece. And maybe I'll put a little one here and a little one over there. So those are the little X1, Y1 because I am working with the first displacement right there. So that's number one. All right, so now if I wanted to find out exactly what these values are, you don't necessarily have to. You can just leave them as they are and then add them at the end. But if you did, you can do that. So 25 multiplied by cos of 15, and you're going to get your actual result. So 24.1481, etc. Whatever it is that you wanna be able to round to, you can. Now, because I don't wanna worry about rounding, I'm gonna just leave it as it is, okay, in this way, and you'll see what I'll do at the end. And this way, you don't have to. If you're rounding in intermediate steps, you can always talk to your teachers or your profs, what do they want it at? Sometimes they don't care. But if you want kind of exact answers and only round at the end, you can leave it in this particular form, right? So this form and this form, and that way you don't have to carry any decimals around. It will just be the answer on its own. So this um, area right here, so notice this would be, so in this case, this is six, Okay, point, so it's gonna be 6.4, you know, seven, okay, et cetera, et cetera. I'll put little dots there, kilometers, that's what we would have there. All right, that's my first piece, okay? So this is the X piece. I'm gonna break this down now. So for this particular item, I'm gonna break it down for my second piece. 
So how do I now take this one? Well, so I have to kind of draw it out. So notice it's 12 kilometers and it is um, starting on the north side and then it's five degrees to the east. So how does that look like? So you don't have to necessarily scale it, although you can. So to the north, so this is gonna be kind of like that. And now, so this particular vector, so how it's going to be is this way where that angle right there is five degrees. So you're starting from north and you're going east five degrees. So that's the actual value there. Now, in this case, as you are gonna be drawing out your triangle, so this triangle, okay, as you have it, okay, is going to be, okay, a little bit different right there. So on that triangle, um, your actual Y component, so this is your Y component, and your X component is kind of tiny right there, so that's gonna be your X component. But your angle, notice it's that five degrees, okay, that you have within here. So what I would encourage you to do as you're going through this, so you just label everything, this is 12 kilometers, and then label your opposite and your adjacent to the angle. So your opposite is actually here. That's your opposite, right? Because it's opposite of the angle. And then your adjacent, so this one will be right here. So now this will break down your X and your Y components for this. So again, so let's break it down. This is gonna be the X component, okay, of piece number two, and it is equal to, so now you start, so this is 12 kilometers multiplied. Now the X, notice it's the opposite, so we have to take the sine of that angle, so this is gonna be sine, and this is sine of five degrees in this case. And then your Y component, which you have, so this is DY number two, and this is going to be 12 kilometers, multiplied by, now the Y is the adjacent, right? Okay, so that's that. And this will be, uh, as you're pushing through there, so this would be the cos of that five degrees. And again, you can compute it as we did above, so we can find out exactly what these values are, so we can do that if you wanted to, or you can leave it in this format right there. That way you don't have to round anything as of yet. So now we have two pieces in X. Now ask yourself, is the X positive? Um, yes, it is. Notice it's to the right, so it's going to stay positive. And then is the Y positive? Yes, it is. It's going up, so that's also positive. So, so far what I have is, so I know that all these pieces, this one was positive, this one was positive, this one is positive, this one is positive, if we're assuming to the right is positive and up is positive, right, or east and north. Now that now leaves me with the last piece. So this is this particular piece that I have in there. Okay, so that's my third piece. So it's 18 kilometers. Now notice west, 40 degrees south. So west, 40 degrees south. So how does that look like? Well, so you're starting from west. Well, west is in this direction, right? So west, okay, and then 40 degrees south, which is going to bring you Okay, in this direction right there. So that is now 40 degrees. So starting from west, you're going south 40 degrees. So now your little triangle that you form is gonna be this triangle. And again, so what do you have? This item, so it was 18 kilometers. So this is 18 kilometers. Now with respect to this angle right there, so this is the opposite angle. This is the adjacent, sorry, opposite side and adjacent side. So you label it opposite, adjacent. The opposite and adjacent just simply tells you, should you use sine or should you use cos? So the opposite is always the sine and adjacent is always the cos of that angle that you have. So now in this case, so this would be the last piece. So X component, the X three, it is equal to, so 18 kilometers multiplied by, now notice the X, which is going to the left, so it will be now negative, right? It's to the left side. So it is um, adjacent, so notice this is gonna be cos 40 degrees. So that is your X value, it will be negative for us. If we calculated it, okay, it would be positive, but we have to make sure that it's negative component because it's going to the left. The Y component is also going to be negative. It's going down and that particular Y component, so the third component of Y, is going to be now 18 kilometers, again, multiplied by, now this times it's sine of 40 degrees, 
and this is also negative. So now bringing it all together, so if you wanted, so this is going to be your total. So your total in the X, okay, is going to be the addition of all the three of them. So what does that mean? Well, so here it is. So here's was your first one, right? So this one was positive. I'm going to copy it. So this is the first piece. Now you're going to be adding it. Okay, this is your second piece, which is also positive. So that's this piece right there. So copy it. Okay, paste it right there. If you are just dealing with numbers, if you're computing and you had to round and your teachers are okay with that, that's fine. You can do that. And then the last piece, notice it's a subtraction, and this is your last X component piece. So now I'm gonna just take this, bring it down. You have to now sum all of these up together, right? So as you're going through this, you have to now find out what the total was. So now you can enter it all in. So this is what I would do. So 25 multiplied by cos of 15. Then I would say plus, okay? This is gonna be 12 multiplied by the sine of five. And again, this is all in degrees. And then subtract the last one, which is 18 multiplied by the cos of 40. What does this do? It allows me not to carry any rounding errors. It's just all exact. And now all I have to do is you know, hit equals and I'll get what the total was. So the total in the X is gonna be 11.4. You know, this one I'll round. So this is the three significant figures. You can keep more if you wanted to. To be honest, all of these were actually to two sig figs. So the actual starting points, you know, two sig figs, two sig figs, Okay, and two right here. Okay, I can keep this to three, although it's an overkill. If I wanted to be able to keep it to the same amount, I would just keep it to two. So maybe let's let's do that. So now that would be 11 kilometers approximately. And notice it's positive. So what this is telling me, so I have, so in this direction, okay, so my X is going to the right 11 kilometers. That's the X value of the displacement. Now I shift over and I basically do the same thing with the Y. So now I'm gonna take my first piece of Y. So let me copy this, bring it down right here. So this is my Y component that I'm now dealing with of the total. The second piece of Y is going to be this one. And this one is also positive. So copy it, we're going to be adding this. So this is right there, let's paste it down. So that's my second piece. And then my last piece, so this is this one right there, notice it is negative. So if I take this piece, copy it, let's paste it down. This one was subtracted. And I do the same thing. So now I can just go ahead, okay, and work with this entirely. So 25 multiplied by sine of 15, plus now the next piece, 12, multiplied by, this is gonna be cos of five. And then lastly, so this is subtracted, and this is gonna be 18 multiplied by sine of 40. And these are all now your summed up components of Y, which is gonna be six, and I guess I'll leave it to two sig figs, so let's say 6.9 okay, right there, okay? And this would have been kilometers. Now, one thing that I've forgotten, technically, we are still not at the last result. So, you know, I shouldn't maybe round these as of yet, right? So I kind of maybe should keep more because then I have to reconstruct the entire vector. So, you know, since that is indeed the case, maybe I'll do that. So I'll keep a little few more, okay, within here. So this is going to be six, you know, eight, five, you know, four, six. So I'll keep enough of these in here now the other one that i had so let me fill that back up in there so let's do that so this one was 11 4 0 5 you know 2 1 so this was that now what does this all mean so on the y notice it's also positive so that means it goes in this direction so when you are now reconstructing this this is really what i have i have a vector so this one is i guess you know approximately this is the 11.40521. Okay, 
that's my x. My y component, so notice this is going to be my y component as I go through. This is going up, and this one is going up 6.8546. Both are in kilometers, kilometers. So my resultant vector is this vector, right? That's my resultant vector. So if I wanted to know what my total displacement was, I can now find this out. Now, how do I do that to reconstruct it back? Well, now I will use the, the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude. So the magnitude of this, so we typically would write kind of magnitude in terms of absolute values to let us know. And this is nothing else. So this means squared of the two components. So 11, you know, 4, 0, 5, 2, 1 squared plus 6.8546, you know, etc. squared. So let's find out what that component was. And then we have to take the square root of those that entire thing. So let's see what that is. So there we have it. Now you can actually round. So I'm going to keep it to 13 you know, kilometers. So that's the actual. So this would have been 13 kilometers approximately rounded to two sig figs. And now we also need to know what this angle is, right? So what is this angle that we have? And that particular angle, okay, to, in order to find the angle, this is always the 10. So we have to understand the 10. And notice this is opposite over. So it's going to be the inverse of opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 6.85, so on, divided by, this is going to be 11.405, etc. And now we can find by using the 10 or the inverse 10, what that angle is. So if I plug that all in, so 10, you know, 6.8546 divided by, and this was, I guess, 11. Uh, 40521, that gives me the angle. So that angle is approximately 31 degrees. So there you have it. That is how you can reconstruct. And now your entire vector is 13 kilometers, right, that you have. So that is your total displacement. And now this is 31 degrees. Notice, so you are starting from, so this is at 31 degrees to the horizontal, or you can write it in this way, so starting from east, going 31 up north. So either, you know, you can write it in any format that you like, but this is one of them. Great example, really tests your understanding of how to break down these components into X and Y just by using sines, cosines, and then to reconstruct, you need Pythagorean theorem, and you need to understand the 10 inverse. And that is actually all you'll need for all the vectors. Yes, there are all magical different things that you can learn in math, the sine laws and cosine laws and so on. And you can certainly use those, but this is probably the easier method when you have multiple vectors to deal with. All right, that is it for this example. I hope that you have found it useful. And now, okay, I hope that you can try out on your own how to break down these vectors and what to look out for. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.